UFC 308 Tapuria vs Holloway took place on October 26th at the Etihad Arena in Abu Dhabi, UAE. The event brought in millions at the gate and even more in pay-per-view revenue, sponsorships, and merchandise sales. Not to mention ESPN's broadcasting deal, which pulls in $300 million a year. But how big of a slice did the fighters take home? International commissions typically don't disclose fighter pay information, so the purses I'll be showing in this video are just projections based on disclosed earnings from previous events. With that said, let's jump into the first fight. Every fighter that's under contract, if you want to tell the media what you're paid, that's up to you. Ebal Aslan in just his second fight off the Contender Series closed out the prelims with a bang as he pummeled Rafael Cerquera in the first round. Trapping his opponent against the cage, Aslan unloaded punches to the face and body and finished the fight via TKO in just 51 seconds. Cerquera on his first fight with the promotion made $10,000 to show and $4,000 in Venom sponsorship, also known as Fight Week Incentive, for a total of $14,000. While Aslan, also on his rookie contract, brought in $12,000 to show and $12,000 for the win, along with $4,000 in sponsorship, and while he didn't earn a performance bonus, Dana said at the post-fight press conference that Ebal would be taken care of. This type of locker room bonus is usually to the tune of four dollars to $25,000, so for the sake of this estimate, I'll say he pocketed another $10K for $38,000 on the night. And now, kicking off the main card, Armin Petrosian brought pressure immediately against Shara Magomedov and had him hurt in the opening minute. But Shara settled in, landing his own shots and ultimately winning the round. The second played out on the feet as well, and in the waning seconds, Magomedov landed a first-of-its-kind double-spinning backfist that floored Petrosian and resulted in a TKO victory. Petrosian brought in $31,000 to show and $6,000 in sponsorship and took home $37,000. While Shara Bullet Magomedov for the first fight on his newly inked contract made $42,000 to show and another $42,000 for the win, $4,500 in sponsorship pay, along with a performance of the night bonus, for a total of $138,500. In the second fight, Dan Ige applied the pressure early against the undefeated Lerone Murphy, charging in with combos and a takedown midway through the round. Murphy was able to get back up to the feet, but absorbed a massive left hook from Ige that sat him down on the canvas. In the second, both men were a little more patient, and Murphy used his kicks to keep Dan at range while scoring a takedown of his own. The third round was grappling heavy, and both men unloaded on the feet in the final minute. It was a close fight, but resulted in a unanimous decision victory for Lerone Murphy. Ige, fresh off his last second replacement fight at UFC 303, said that he was paid both his show and win money for that event, despite losing, and made two or three times his normal pay. So while he likely went back to his normal rate for this fight, he also signed a new contract as part of the deal, giving him around $115,000 to show, as well as $16,000 in sponsorship pay, for $131,000 on the night. While Murphy preserved his undefeated record and earned $48,000 to show and another $48,000 for the win, $6,000 in Venom sponsorship, and a total of $102,000. The third fight started with a kick-heavy attack from Alexander Rakic, who took on fellow light heavyweight Magomed Ankalaev. Body shots from Ankalaev opened up the rest of his striking game as his punches found the mark in the second and third rounds. It was a very competitive fight, but Ankalaev's pressure and control put him ahead on the scorecards for a unanimous decision win. Rakic earned $92,000 to show and $6,000 in sponsorship pay for a total of $98,000. And the winner Magomed Ankalaev made $102,000 to show and another $102,000 for the win, $11,000 in sponsorship, and a total of $215,000. The co-main event played out in less than one round as Hamza Chamayev dominated the former middleweight champion Robert Whitaker with his smothering wrestling. It ended in devastating fashion as Chamayev squeezed a choke over Whitaker's face, more or less caving in his teeth in the process. I won't show the photo, but it was pretty brutal to witness. Hamza would go on to take the submission win. We have a decent idea what Whitaker took home based on his disclosed pay from UFC 298. So for this fight, he likely earned $300,000 guaranteed, along with $21,000 in sponsorship, bringing his total to $321,000 on the night. And as for the winner Hamzat Chemaev, I'll be honest, I have little to no reliable information on what the man makes from his UFC contract. At the pre-fight media day, he claimed that he was quote, making more than any champion, and previously stated to Nina Drama that his purse was nearly $3 million a fight. That would put him right up there with what Kamaru Usman and Israel Adesanya were making as champions back in 2022, who pocketed $2.5 and $3.5 million respectively, according to John Nash on the Hey Not The Face podcast. Yet, at the media day, Chemaev also 
also complained that it's been hard not making money for so long due to his extended layoff. I'm inclined to believe there's something off about his numbers. It's unclear whether the impossibly high $3 million claim includes other sponsorships or income coming from outside the cage. And in fact, Hamzat himself said after his weight miss at UFC 279, he offered Diaz his purse of $1 million, while a sponsor offered to pay another $2 million. There is precedent for non-champions making more than their publicly disclosed amounts. Derek Lewis, again according to Nash, makes nearly a million dollars a fight. But even that would be pretty unheard of for a non-champion on his eighth fight with the promotion. The only thing we know for sure is he received $6,000 in Venom sponsorship and a $50,000 performance of the night bonus, which totals up to $1,056,000. But if what he claims is accurate, his pay would be truly unprecedented. Only 7% of the people watching this video are subscribers, so if you're enjoying the content and want to keep up with all the latest videos, take a moment to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And finally, the main event of the evening, former featherweight champion Max Holloway attempted to regain his title from the undefeated Ilya Tapuria. Max held his own in the boxing exchanges in the first two rounds, even taking the first on one judge's scorecard. But ultimately, El Matador held true to his promise and became the first man to knock Holloway out with a vicious left hook in the third round, defending his belt and padding his resume with another featherweight all-time great. While Holloway's contract likely carries a lower guaranteed rate than when he held the belt, he is a former champion and a star in his own right. I'd still estimate a base of around $1 million. He also earned $32,000 in sponsorship pay, and while he's not the current champ, so pay-per-view points are not guaranteed, as the BMF title holder and a fighter that certainly moves the needle, I find it hard to believe that they deny him the additional revenue, which at the standard rate outlined in multiple publicly released UFC documents, comes out to another $400,000, totaling $1,432,000 on the night. And as for the still undisputed UFC featherweight champion, Ilya the Matador Tapuria, since it's only his first defense, I'll estimate $1.5 million guaranteed, although $2 million wouldn't surprise me. He also made the champion's rate of $42,000 in Venom sponsorship, along with his $50,000 bonus and his $400,000 cut of the pay-per-view, taking his total to just under $2 million. That's all for this episode. Any corrections to the numbers I've shown will be listed in a pinned comment below. As always, thanks for watching. See you next week for UFC Fight Night Moreno vs. Albazi. Bro, like, you have a fam- your family has money. Your family is rich, right? Like, because you, <laughs> you built a $2 million gym in your house, you just won the belt! How could you have that much money? Because I, I do stuff a part of the UFC. I do many, many things. Because normally when the cha we become champion, we get a lot of money, you know? Yeah. But you got money like you've been the champ for 10 years. You got John Jones money. He <laughs> 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 got money like John Jones. He just won the belt. I just try to do you know? my things outside the UFC too. Yeah. So thanks to God, everything is going great. Thank you for checking in with me.